you. Amen. Amen. We don't want to start the message off on a sad note, but I do want to say that Mount Galilee lost a soldier yeah. on last week. Yeah. We need to let that remind us that he's steady calling the road. And when the doors of the church is open, you need to realize that this may be your last time. And you may already be a church member, but you might need to rededicate. You can't never say forgive me too many times. So consider that when the doors are open. We do preach in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who does all things well. The Lord had dropped into my spirit a song which was confirmed by the choir. They already sing it, so we won't do it again, but can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Drop that into my spirit and the choir started us out with it. Hallelujah. So we're going to go right into preaching, into the Word. Amen. Amen. We thank you for the reading of the Word from Ephesians 6 chapter uh, 1 through 4th verse. And we want to pull from that 4th verse our subject. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them in the nurture and, help me say that, admonition of the Lord. Amen, amen. And we know that is to teach them right. and counsel them. Yeah. That's what that word is. I can I know what it means, but I can't say it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to use what subject this morning for just a moment. A godly father. A godly father. We realize today is Father's Day. We know that's the day when we get neckties, socks, shoes, ribbon say ugly neckties, shoes, tools, amen, and all of those things, those gifts. But, and we're grateful for that, but we don't want to make light of this holiday because fathers are important. A few weeks ago, we, we preached on Mother's Day. We talked about a godly mother. And today we want to talk about a godly father. Amen. One of the first things, amen, fathers, men, about becoming a father, one of the first things you have to do carefully is to choose the mother of your children. That's nothing that you do lightly. Someone that you want to mother your children. This is one of the most important decisions you ever make as a father. Who's going to be the mother of your children? The Bible teaches us to be a godly father, so therefore you want to choose a godly mother to mother your children. And when choosing who will mother your children, it needs to be chosen and considered prayerfully. Do not choose the mother of your children without going in prayer. God makes it plain, amen, that a godly father includes a godly wife. One goes with the other. They don't go one by themselves, but a godly father needs a godly wife. And children need godly parents. Once you have invested great time in considering the mother of your children, amen, the other most important thing that you're going to do, amen, is to show your children that you love their mother. One of the most important things that a father can do other than following God first is to show them that you love mama. Yes. You love their mother. Yes, sir. Amen. That's very important to a child. I don't want to 
make light of Mother's Day and Father's Day and, and say it's all about gifts. But I want you to know that children requires both a mama and a daddy. That's a requirement. They need both a mother and a father in the home. We know that the father, brothers and sisters, should be in the house because he is designed by God. He is designed to be the living picture of what Christ is like in the home. The father should be patient. The father should be a, a leader. The father should be a teacher. And the father should show love to his entire family. And not only that, a father should be a provider. What am I saying? The father should be the picture of what Christ is in the home. But worldwide, brothers and sisters, men have fallen short of these godly examples. Let me tell you how important a father is. A father is so important, brothers and sisters, to God himself gave himself a father. We realize that Jesus is God, but Jesus has a father. So if God gave himself a father, that tells me that the fathers are important. I realize that we're living in a time where we have many families that does not consist of a mother and a father, both in the home. In fact, I'll be the first one to say that mothers can do a pretty good job of raising children by themselves. But I don't want to make light. I do want to say that children do require a mama and a dad in the home. When we look at the role of a father in a home, the first thing we need to say that the, that the uh, role of a father is a difficult role. There's nothing easy about being a daddy. You can call it easy if you want it, but there's nothing easy about it. But God gives us the perfect instructions for us to become a godly father. The first thing we have to do to become a godly father, amen, is to learn to trust God. And to learn to follow God. We have to learn to follow God as our family follow us. The second thing we must do is seek Him daily. Daily. When it comes down to our wife and children, we seek Him first. We ask for His advice and the guidance and the leadership of our family. You can't do it on your own. Walking around talking about how I wear the pants. But you got to seek him. Follow him as they follow you. This passage of scripture that was just read was very important in the day of Paul. But it's just as important, amen, in this generation and everyone since. But it's particularly crucial for the day's time. You see, our generation is a generation of problem children. And we can't blame the children because this generation is a generation of problem parents. And the major source of the problem with the parents is the failure of the father to heed the instructions of the Lord. Children and parents should walk together in God's will. The Bible said in the scripture that was read, children, obey your parents 
But there is a stipulation. It said in the Lord. Fathers, you need to understand. Amen. That your children obedience unto you are limited. According to the Bible. When a father is not in the Lord and spend his time provoking his children. You need to know according to the Bible, they don't have to follow you. Uh, this is per Bible. Can I get a witness? Father, I realize that you are the head of the family. Amen. But if you're not in the Lord, you can't expect your wife or even your children to follow in your footsteps. The Bible, amen, is full of instructions on how to be a godly father. First of all, fathers, you got to be a spiritual leader in your home. If you're wondering why your wife ignores your every word, Maybe you're not following Christ. If you're wondering why your children don't respect you, maybe you're not walking in the Word of God. Can I get a witness? You see, the father alone with his wife by his side is responsible for the biblical education of their children. Don't think that they're going to get it all in the church. But it's up to you and myself to start in the home. Can I get a witness? Father, amen, not only have to make sure that our children get the word, but we have to make sure that it goes on to the next generation. In other words, not only our children, but our grandchildren. Amen is on our show. Can I get a witness? Being a father, brothers and sisters, is not an easy job, but yet it is serious business. Can I get a witness? We're not going to hold you long, but I want to tell you, amen, about a godly father. Can I get a witness? There is a godly father who loved his children so much until he paid for them with his life. Can I get a witness? Can I talk for a moment about a godly father? He is a father, a man that loves his children. Can I get a witness? He is a father that takes time and sit down, amen, and talk to his children when they tell them everything that's on their mind. Can I get a witness? He is the one, amen, who will tell his children everything is going to be all right. Can I get a witness? A godly father is a father, amen, who will walk with his children. Can I get a witness and talk with his children? Ain't God all right? A godly father is a father that will not give up, amen, on his children. Every now and then, they will make a mistake. But a godly father is a father, amen, that forgives his children. Can I get a witness? Somebody right now ought to know who I'm talking about. Can I get a witness? Yeah. A godly father is a father, amen, who keeps his promise. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I know a father who promised he'll never leave yeah. nor forsake me. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I know a father, amen, who said he'll stick closer, yeah. amen, than a brother. Yeah. Can I get a witness? 
a godly father, amen, is a father who nourishes his children, picks them up when they're down. Can I get a witness? But let me tell you, amen, about the ultimate sacrifice. A godly father is a father that'll lay down his life. Can I get a witness? The prophet said he was wounded for our transgression. Ain't God all right? Do you know who I'm talking about? Can I get a witness? This father I'm talking about, ain't God all right? Was whipped, amen, until flesh fell from his broken body. Can I get a witness? This father I'm talking about, ain't God all right? Laid the cross on his shoulder, and they marched him up a hill called Calvary. Can I get a witness? I'm talking about a godly father, and his name is Jesus. Can I get a witness? The same Jesus that I'm talking about. Can I get a witness? Laid down on an old rugged cross. Can I get a witness? Ain't gone all right. Nailed his hands, nailed his feet. Ain't gone all right. This godly father I'm talking about, can I get a witness? They lift him up on that old rugged cross. Can I get a witness? Speared my God in his side. Ain't God all right? This God I'm talking about, can I get a witness? Hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. Ain't God all right? Hung there, bled and died. Can I get a witness? Can I tell you the rest of the story about a godly father? They took him down off that cross. Can I get a witness? Buried him in a borrowed tomb. Ain't God all right? The Bible said somewhere before daylight, ain't God all right? This Jesus I'm talking about, can I get a witness? Stepped out of the grave, ain't God all right? With all power, all power in his hand, ain't God all right? Let me tell you the rest of the story. Can I get a witness? That was early in the morning. Ain't God all right? But later on, that same evening, ain't God all right? Jesus showed up. Ain't God all right? Manifested himself unto his disciples. Can I get a witness? Ain't God all right? They praised him. They was happy to see him. Ain't God all right? But do you remember the story about Thomas? Can I get a witness? They told Thomas that Jesus had appeared. Can I get a witness? Ain't God all right? But Thomas said, unless I see the hole in his hand, ain't God all right? Unless I see the hole in his side, ain't God all right? Thomas said, I will not believe. Can I get a witness? Ain't God all right? About that time, Jesus showed himself unto Thomas. He said, Thomas, touch the holes in my hand. Ain't God all right? Thrust your hands in the hole in my side. Ain't God all right? I can hear Thomas in my mind when he said, I believe. Ain't God all right? About that time, Jesus said, I gotta leave you. I got to go away. Ain't God all right? Let me tell you where he went. Ain't God all right? Jesus went up to be with his father. Ain't God all right? Up there, streets are paved with gold. Ain't God all right? Up there, 
walls of Jasper. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Up there, he said there'll be no more crying. Ain't God all right? Up there, there'll be no more dying. Can I get a witness, huh? Ain't God all right? Up there, he said God will wipe all tears from your eye. Ain't God all right? What I like about it, up there, there'll be no more sickness. Ain't God all right? No more doctors and no more medicine. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Up there, there'll be 12 gates and to the city. The Bible said the gates will be a pearl. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I can see Jesus. Ain't God all right? When he went up in the heaven. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? When Jesus stepped in, ain't God all right? The angels fell their face. Ain't God all right? The angels fell down and worshiped King Jesus. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? But not only that, can I get a witness? About that time, Jesus went to his father. Ain't God all right? Jesus told his father, he said, Father, I promised my church. Ain't God all right? He said, I got to leave them, but I gave them a promise. I told my church, I won't leave them alone. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? About that time, when Jesus stepped in, ain't God all right? The Holy Ghost stepped out. Ain't God all right? It just happened to be on the day of Pentecost. Ain't God all right? The Holy Ghost fell upon the church. Ain't God all right? The Bible said, ain't God all right? The Bible said it was like fire that set upon them. Ain't God all right? The Bible said they spoke in foreign tongues. Can I get a witness? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I can see in my mind. Ain't God all right? I can see tears rolling down their faces. Ain't he all right? I can see in my mind hands going up. Ain't God all right? Feet getting light. Ain't God all right? I can see the church on the day of Pentecost praising God. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I wonder, does anybody in this house ever had a Holy Ghost experience? I wonder if there's anybody in this house the Holy Ghost has ever fell on you. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? The Holy Ghost will make you move. Ain't God all right? Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Grandma said, if you got good religion, you ought to show some sign. Every now and then, your feet ought to move. Every now and then, your hands ought to go up. Every now and then, your mouth ought to come open. Every now and then. Every now and then. Every now and then, you ought to shout hallelujah. Every now and then, tears ought to roll down your face. Ain't God all right? Every now and then, you ought to tell him thank you. Every now and then, you ought to praise his name. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Who is this godly father I'm talking about? Do you know his name? Do you know him? Do you know him? What's his name? What's his name? Help me call him Jesus, Mary's baby. Jesus, the lily of the valley. Jesus, that bright morning star. Jesus, ain't God all right? I don't know about you, but I know him as a doctor in the sick room. 
I don't know about you, but I know him as a lawyer in the courtroom. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I know him as my father. I know him as my mother. I know him as my friend. I know him my all in all. I know him as my counselor. I know him as my healer. I know him. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Help me call him Jesus. Call him Jesus. Call him Jesus. Say, my doctor, my lawyer, my brother, my mother, my sister. I gotta leave you alone. But this man, I just love talking about him. I just love telling the world about him. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me. There's been times when I wanted to throw in the towel, but it was Jesus that came to see about me. It was Jesus that came and touched my body. Ain't God all right? Come on and get to know the man today. Come on and get to know the man today. That godly father whose name is Jesus. One who set the example for all the daddies. Did he do it? Did he do it? Come on, the doors of the church. The doors of the church. Hallelujah. 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 We're standing ready to receive you now. We're ready to receive you. With everyone. Come right now. Come right now.
I didn't say in details, but she was having chest pains. And uh, according to this note, she will have heart surgery on tomorrow. we we'll have stents put in. She's in the big DCH room 129. I think that's the ICU, isn't it? 129. Uh, you know, the lower the floor is the more serious the problem is out there in DCH. Uh, so we're going to, let's say share. Well, it's a share, so I shared it. So we're going to go and pray up. As we leave, I want everybody to kind of come together. We're going to hold hands and we're going to touch and agree as we pray. Uh, and as we leave, we're going to speak healing for Sister Don. Yes, he will do it. He will do it. And we just want to touch and agree. Amen. Amen. We're going to touch and agree. Somebody, somebody put your hand on me. Amen. Put your hand on me. Lord Father, we thank you right now for what is taking place. 
Father, we know that you said in your word, if we ever need you, all we have to do is ask. You also said in your word, we have not because we ask not. So we're asking right now for a complete healing. We pray, Lord, that you move out there at DCH on our sister, our friend, our mother, Sister Dunn. We pray, Lord, that you touch the minds of her doctor. We pray, Lord, that you steady the hands. We pray, Lord, that you bless all of her caregivers. And by faith, Lord, we receive healing 100%. And Father, we're so careful to give you all the thanks and all the glory. Now, Lord, we pray and we thank you, Lord, for what is taking place in this house today. We pray, Lord, as we leave this place that we do not leave your presence. Now, let's look to heaven. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within us all. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.